So man, you know, I got the idea in my brain. Now this happened maybe two years prior, you know what I'm saying, two years prior. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this idea of jumping out of a plane. Now, at the same time, I'm going through some form of um, coming out of a depressed state. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through so many different changes, so many different um, avenues. And as I'm growing, you know what I'm saying, I still have certain things that I need to um, change and adjust. So I'm still on that process of changing and adjusting to a lot of different stuff. Um, so, you know, as I'm going through this, man, I, I, my, the first initial idea is, um, uh, well, I'm just going to end it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this and, and if I die, so whatever. It is what it is. But, you know, but then as time came along, you know, I, I started to grow and that idea became as, no, I'm not going to die. Now, a part of the reason why that could have happened is as a child, I remember when I would be on the swings. Um, and you know, uh, my father, man, he, he you know, he kind of programmed uh, these little ideas in my head that if you go too high, you'll break your, you'll break your neck, you know, and and not in the nicest way of really saying it. Um, so, and, you know, I, I always have that idea, and that, that opinion in my head that man, I can't do something because I'm gonna break my neck, you know. I went through a particular situation before that where I was having trouble doing backflips. Now, I'm very interested in, in uh, uh, the gymnastics, man. I've very, been very flexible, you know, basically my whole entire life. I can still put my leg behind my head. Um, <laughs> um, but as this, as this stuff is going on, you know, I finally was able to accomplish that, man. But that I was able to accomplish that later on in my life to finally do like two backflips. And that meant a lot to me. And, um, you know, as I'm breaking out of my, my father's uh, uh, cycle of thinking, you know, I'm coming on this cycle of actually going skydiving. Now, so prior to uh, that event, man, I had problems going on roller coasters because of my dad. Man, I hear my dad in my head, I hear my dad in my head, and he's telling me how much I'm gonna break my neck. And this has started as I was a child. This is why you have to be very careful what you say to your child at very young ages because they're, they're, they're sponges. And every time somebody says that they're sponges, you always take it in a positive manner. But no, there are sponges in positive and negative. So they see both sides of what's going on. So you have to be very careful and cautious about what you say and what you impute inside your child's mind because that can cause something to build in his mind to where you created the fear and now he's grown up to in, in his adult years or her adult years and can't you know what I'm saying can't understand why they can't break this cycle of fear towards a particular event or a particular situation um so prior to that man I finally at 21 man I finally rode my first roller coaster man I finally rode this amusement park that we had I rode all the rides man I said I was scared of and I've been going to this park for a very long time but I never rode all the rides but at 21 I finally was able to accomplish accomplish that fear so I broke that broke that spell bam broke the freaking two years later broke the backflip spell bam done now I'm on skydiving. Now I'm a, on my own world. Now I'm just, I'm just increased. You know what I'm saying? I'm now I'm leveling up. So I'm going to this. I'm going through the kind of my mental issues, and I, I'm like, man, I'm gonna do this. So we driving down there, man, and you know what I'm saying? I'm still thinking like, man, this might be it. You know, this might be it. As I'm going through this process, this might be it. This might be it. So uh, everybody was flipping out. Everybody was flipping out before this happened. People were flipping out like, man, you go on skydiving. What you mean you go on skydiving, man? That's dangerous, that blah, blah, blah. They're fearing, their their fears, they're trying to impute their fears onto me and they're not even there. So they don't even know how I'm already feeling. So I'm already kind of bothered about the situation, but I'm gonna go through it. So, but they're trying to impute and send their information of fears to me about what I'm about to do. Like, like I've even was told to be careful, be safe. Well, man, how? <laughs> you know, I, I can't. I, I really don't control too much of what happens outside of falling outside the plane. So, how? But it's their fears, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be safe falling out of a plane. It's not safe. You know, we know it's not safe. But before that happens, people would say to me all the time, "Oh, skydiving is dangerous." When I told them, "Yeah, man, I'm thinking about going skydiving," and they're like, "Well, well, what if something bad happens?" I said, "Well, I won't have to think about it long." <laughs> And it, it's kind of funny, man, because it's the truth, man. You know, we, we don't realize, man, if death so happens to hit us, you don't got to think about it. It's over. It's all over with. 
um, so, so I stopped dwelling on it, man. Once you leave this body, it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it's going to be until you either transition back or, in, or, or until or you out for good. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm looking at things like that, man, I'm still, you know, I'm still, we driving down there and, man, you know, I'm kind of contemplating. Now I'm getting a little bit better, man. I'm kind of breaking my, my depression cycle as I'm going through it. I almost was like, oh, I'm going back up. You know what I'm saying? I won't do this anymore. I'm happy now. But I'm like, no, man, I'm going to face these fears. I'm going to attack them head on. So we get to the place, you know, we get to the place and, you know, you get inside, man. They got this big waiver, man. You got to sign. We about two hours earlier than time. And I'm looking at these waiver, man. I ain't taking forever to sign it. The person that I'm with, man, she is like, mm, it's done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she's already, she game. She's already game for it. But I'm reading the contract. I'm double reading it. And I'm like, man. I'm overthinking it, basically. And basically, man, when you be overthinking so much stuff, you just be like, man, forget this. But I'm like, you know what? I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I ain't scared. You know what I'm saying? I, I drove all the way out here to do this. I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? I made it up in my mind. I don't care what happens. I'm doing this. So I go do this. Now, like I said, I'm afraid of heights. So we get in the plane. You know what I'm saying? We the last, we the last group. Get in the plane. You know what I'm saying? Before that, they strapping us up, saying all these kind of interesting things, making us laugh, you know what I'm saying? Joking around, trying to keep our mind off of it. Hey man, this little small plane that I probably can fit in like a small classroom. And and one thing was pretty funny was the guys were like, man, you know, we never see too many black people out here doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, well, we must be the dumbest ones. Either we the, we the bravest or we the dumbest ones. But I mean, like I said, man, it's not about your race. It's about doing, it's about having that experience that you want to experience. No, no experience is built for one particular group. Experience it, man. These ideas come to for everyone to experience. They may come through one part group of individuals, but they are for everybody. You know what I'm saying? The person who created the post-it didn't create the post-it for a particular group. He could create it for everybody. Clothes are created for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time. Um, so, you know, if you go to Target or Walmart, man, they making clothes for black, white, Mexican, Asian, brown, you don't, they don't care if you're uh, alien as long as you got the cash.